Chris and I like to play with water. This is the last episode in our three episode installment of doing this 10 gallon rimless tank. Now, last we left off, I put the hair grass in there. So in this episode, I'm going to trim the hair grass, clean up the tank, give it a quick water change, add our plants and our livestock in there. Okay, so the tank's been up and running for about a month now. It's got a little bit of algae here and there, which is to be expected. Now, I have added three inhabitants so far. I have three blue Moscow guppies in there. Now, what happened after I set this up and filled it with water was I was actually having a lot of, uh, believe it or not, mosquito larvae. I haven't seen any mosquitoes in my basement. I haven't been bit, nothing, just there was randomly baby mosquito larvae in there. So I bought the uh, guppies and they thoroughly made quick work of those. And my, my hope with them is that they will actually help uh, with algae control also. As with uh, a lot of other live bears like guppies, platies, and sword tails, they do love to graze on algae. Now as you can see, the dwarf hair grass is starting to uh, sprout and spread all around, which is good. But we do have some dead uh, tops on some of these pieces. Now these dead tops were on there when I initially planted them, but I kind of wanted to have them get a little established and have a good stronghold in this tank. So I believe we're there. So in preparation for the other inhabitants coming in, hopefully tomorrow, I'm going to do a water change, clean the glass, and we're going to trim up some of these uh, dying off tips on the, on the hair grass. So let's dive into that. Alright, so first things first is we're going to clean all this unsightly algae off of the viewing uh, panels, or viewing panes. Now in addition to the mosquito larvae I had in here, I have some other little uh, freshwater copepods floating, uh, swimming around in there. A pretty healthy um, population of bladder snails, which are helping to eat some of this diatome and uh, other algae that are growing in here. A lot of these uh, microfauna, I believe, were hitchhikers from the cute, from the, I'm sorry, the uh, bowl that came on the uh, dwarf hair grass. All right, so now that the glass is nice and clean, next step we're going to do is turn off the filter and siphon out about two gallons. So roughly we're gonna be doing a 20% water change. Now this is what I've been doing weekly ever since it finally uh, finished cycling. Now what this is going to do, it's going to um, force the plant to stop spending, uh, sending nutrients to these uh, wilting away stems, or leaves rather. And it'll force it to now spend that energy on creating new growth. All right, now for the fun part, uh, fishing out all those little trimmings we got. This is probably the most annoying part about having um, hair grass or, you know, I'm sure it goes for Baby Tears or Monte Carlo, is cleaning the mess up. Now we're gonna pull this piece of wood out because we're gonna do something with this anyway. It may just be easier to do it while it's out of the tank. Actually, most of it's stuck to that wood, so that was a good move. Every once in a while, I have a bright idea. Okay, so we're going, going to attach some uh, java moss to the top of that piece of wood. After doing a little bit of research, java moss and I believe it was Christmas moss seem to be the only two that can deal with high light conditions. So we're going to give it a go. 
I got plenty of it, so it's nothing really out of pocket. Okay. That's actually a pretty decent chunk of moss. What I'm hoping to do is shove it right in there and let it do its thing. So this should be pretty straightforward. And that's it. All right, so let's get the wood back into place. All right, so what we did as far as uh, plants in here was I ordered some Scarlet Temple from Aquarium Co-op. It works very well in a high light, low tech setup. I'm also dosing it with Aquarium Co-op Easy Green and Iron and uh, Magnesium Supplement. So that's growing in pretty well already since we put it in there. The hair grass is already spreading and starting to carpet. I added a little bit of java moss to that top uh, piece of wood up there in hopes that it's gonna branch up a little bit and kind of bush a little bit which it already is starting to do. Now, as far as the livestock, what I did was I got three uh, blue Moscow guppies. Initially it was four, one jumped, it happens. But anyway, so what they're going to start doing is grazing on the algae and eating all the little microfauna that kind of hitchhiked in on the uh, dwarf hair grass. Now, in addition to those three Moscow guppies, I picked up uh, 11 yellow neocaridina shrimp from LRB Aquatics. And they're gonna do the same thing. They're gonna go around, always grazing, eating, picking at things, and keeping the tank real nice and clean. Now, the reasons why I picked these two livestock options was the contrast and colors. You got the nice blue and yellows on the Moscow guppy, and then you got the bright yellow Neocaridina shrimp. And they just work really well against each other with all the green and the red hues from the uh, petrified wood. So all in all, I think this tank came out excellent and it's probably one of my better tanks that I've created so far. So if you like this episode, hit like and subscribe. We'd really appreciate it and we'll see you on the next one. Now it's not going to stand. <laughs> What's that saying? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, I should have paid attention to that.